What's up, entrepreneurs and friends? Rebecca here. Uh, Kobe Grant. And we also have Chad Dorney on the show today. Uh, he's the owner of Turf Organics. We did a 60 second shout out to him last week. Uh, say hello, Chad. What's up? <laughs> All right, so today's episode, we're going to be touching on uh, becoming licensed and insured. And we'll also talk about the financial side of starting a business and, you know, use examples from, from all of our experiences. Uh, so we'll roll right into it. Chad, do you want to tell us a little bit about your business? You know, Absolutely, we, yeah. We said a little bit about it last week, but let, give us the, the rundown. Okay, awesome. Yeah, you did great on the 60 seconds, by Thanks. the way. You did a good job. <laughs> um, so what we do is the company's called Turf Organics. And um, what we do is we offer a less toxic uh, lawn fertilization and pest control services. Mm -hmm. um, we pretty much just use science to use less fertilizers and less toxic chemicals and use more soil amendments and things like that. So um, our whole basis is being more organic, reducing toxins, but not not getting uh, not an expensive price and not losing results either. We're very okay. results based. So we tell people your lawn um, on the lawn side, your lawn's gonna look just as good or better as the chemical guys. We don't want people to notice at all that we've reduced the toxins. Um, because that's a big thing. I studied many other natural companies in the area, and a lot of the reviews, people are like it's a great idea, but it doesn't really work. And, oh. and and it's you know you're paying for a service, so you want to see those results. Mm -hmm. So I spent a whole year using these products and things like that, and finding out how organic can we get, and what can we do, how can we stretch the limits but still see results. So. Mm -hmm. For a whole year, we tested on uh, families and friends' yards and yeah. things like that, and we finally found a formula where we can almost, we're 98% organic on the fertilizers. Mm -hmm. uh, we've reduced the toxins by over 50% uh, on anything for pests, Which fungus, really or weeds. Really environment. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and well, a lot of what we use too, and uh, the humic acid that we use, it traps the products in. So um, that not that we're losing less, it's less likely to run off, and so you oh. won't get so you um, it won't go if we get heavy rains and things like that. Um, a lot of people don't understand there's aquifers all underneath the ground in Florida, so when whatever you put on the ground goes into the aquifers, which goes into your drinking water. Oh. So it's a lot less likely. So we're being more organic, but as well as it's less likely to run off and leach to where you don't want it to be. Wow, so, okay, I didn't even know any of that. Yeah, Did so you know any of that. I know nothing about lawns. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't even like doing my lawns. So much information. Yeah, well, people, lawn. people like you are the reason we're in business, so yes. <laughs> yeah. we appreciate it. I do not do lawns. I mean, I'll have like some days I'll just like, you know what, I'm going to do the lawn, and then I'll get out there. I'm kind of like, you know what, I'm just going to go back inside. <laughs> So, I'm just going to ignore this problem. Yeah, I'm just going to like call We're someone. To we have people that do that. They go, I'm going to do it myself for a little bit. And we promote everyone that wants to do it themselves. So I'm like, hey, I totally respect that. Call me if you need help or anything. Um, and they usually do it around this time when it's, you know, it's 70s and 80s. But then like 100 degrees comes yes. out. And then they, 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 call, yeah, they call us in the summer. They're like, hey, can you guys come back? Our lot's not looking good. That's and it's so hot funny. outside. And we're like, yeah. yeah. That's, well, we figured that would happen. Mm -hmm. That's uh, hilarious. I do have a question, kind of like, how did you, where did you come up, come up with the non-chemical kind of base? So, um, it's kind of being in the right place at the right time and knowing the right people. Um, so my business partner's brother invented a lot of these products. Um, he invented and patented them, like the humic acid and things like that. That wasn't really my idea or anything like that. I always knew I wanted to start a business. I knew I wanted it to be something different, but I had no idea what it would be. Yeah. So um, my business partner at the time, we knew each other from just in the industry, and he was telling me, so when his brother makes these products, his brother sells at the farms overseas, um, and wow. they help grow crops in sandy soil. So he's pretty big. Uh, yes, he's, the, he's the, the second largest producer in the humic acid, which is the product that we use. Oh, so wow. so he's he's big time, but he so he likes to sell the farms and things. He only has a couple big customers. He doesn't deal with smaller industry like what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But um, his product, when he makes it, it makes a waste, which is it's an all natural product, but it's really really watered down, mm -hmm. and it's not enough for him to sell. So he used to just have it in giant waste tanks. He used to pay people to come and get rid of it. Right. Well, my business partner, um, now he called me and asked me if I knew anyone that could use these products. And I told him, I said, well, I have the licensing. I mean, we could put this product out. So uh, that's when we got the, the equipment. And the, I went and met him that night and had dinner with him. He showed me all the science behind it. I was like, science is cool, but I want to see it work. And so we started putting the product out. So we ended up using his waste product 
Um, and then we bought his more of his product and potent it more up because doing it on the scale we're doing it It's not as important if it's exact numbers mm -hmm. if It's a little bit less a little bit more on the organic side or using his humix It's not a big deal, but when he sells it to the farms it is so we're actually recycling the waste problem So now his plants are all 100% recyclable. They have wow. they make all organic products and as well as no waste at all That's amazing. So That's really good. I kind of got the call for the opportunity and I decided to uh, take it did you already, um, were you, you were already licensed for this ahead of time? Yes. Like Turf Organics was already in production? It, Turf Organics was not. I just had my license. So ever since I started mowing lawns, mm -hmm. um, and then I, I bought into that business and I sold my shares to pay for college. I just went to a trade school. Yeah. And I did, I did landscaping. I thought I wanted to be a landscaper. So I did landscaping. Where did you go? Um, FCTC in St. Augustine, oh, First Coast okay. Technical College, right behind St. Augustine High School. Okay. Um, it was great. It's like 50% in the field and 50% in the classroom, which is, need, which is yeah. amazing. So I got all like D's and F's in high school. <laughs> like, I should have, I, I should have never passed. But right when I went to college, I think when I got after my first year, we had 26 different grades, and I got uh, 25 A's and one B. And yeah, it was so like it was it was like. We were talking about this last week. Like people are. Are doing so good in trade schools right now oh, yeah. versus yeah. like and some people four year need, colleges. Yeah, some people need that hands on. Type it, oh, it, it was the hands. It because was because it's kind of like no one just wants to look at a book mm -hmm. and just read about it. I mean, not many colleges. No, colleges I mean, it's for some people and it's for no. It's you just know. you figure out what you want, but yeah. trade school is kind of like I talked about on my other podcast. It's kind of like if you like cutting trees. Go to go to a trade school. Learn more about cutting trees. Yeah, because you can do pretty much anything that you want now. And, mm -hmm. um, Especially in this generation. Yeah, so it's kind of like you have, like, not like back in the day, it's kind of like you gotta go to college. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, oh, well, you can be a YouTuber. Yeah. Obviously, it can be interesting. Now you can go, you know, mow lawns. You start off just doing lawns. So like, okay, how can I expand this to what you're doing? Right. Um, and then me with my tutoring, it's kind of like there's so many tutoring companies. How do I, how am I different? What's gonna set you aside? Mm -hmm. yeah. In his instance, it's uh, being mm -hmm. natural and organic yeah. and yep. recyclable. like. It all just kind of works together, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It's, a, it, it's awesome. So uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in the trade schools. Like I said, and, and we did a lot of things like the irrigations, a lot of math and numbers, which I'm not good at, which writing good do well in school. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh gosh, this is, I'll, I'll never, this is so much. And then we went out and we did it. Yeah. And it just, it clicked so fast. Yeah. Like, it all makes sense. Because you liked what you were doing. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, uh, trade schools and going out and doing it helps so much. Yeah, I, I highly recommend it to anybody to check that out. Because college, like you said, college is for certain people and certain yeah. things. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, it's not for most people. And I looked too. I looked at getting like degrees in like botany and things. And yeah. But it was too much. It was yeah. like that's uh, that's way over qualifying myself. And why am I going to spend all this money? Because I don't need to know that much about a bug. <laughs> you know, I, I really I just need to know how to. I know need to know the basics about them and how to treat them. And that would have just put me way over the top. And I mean, it would have right. been great to know, but I would have really. Never used it. <laughs> yeah. No, so I, I try to promote my kids because I'm a teacher as well mm -hmm. to look into trade schools or finding just doing what they're interested in um, and not being afraid to do it. And what's going to make you happy ultimately? Yeah, because I mean, every, I mean, you hear stories like, oh, I'm only this because my parents wanted me to do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm doing this because it makes a lot of money. Just like money is not going to bring you happiness. Mm -hmm. If you do what you like, the money is eventually going to come. Right. Um, even if it's not like a million Shout dollars. Out here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm, I want to say, did you get me on that? I did. So like, You're welcome. She got me on it, and I have another friend that really is like obsessed with them. And I, I watch some of his stuff. Some, He's super motivational. He's awesome. Yeah, I mean, he just says like, I mean, all the stuff he says is kind of like I'm looking at it. It's kind of like. People should just know that, like, yeah. you're not gonna just make a million or get a thousand followers tomorrow. Yeah. It has to build. And like, I was talking about, like, I got on my Facebook and I looked back at my old tutoring pictures and I started in 2007, just me. And now it's 2020 and I have like 30 tutors. Um, like, everybody in the area just knows who uh, I am. Yeah. So it's kind of like- Years and years of hard work. Yeah, and it's kind of like, you don't even think about like, where, where you started now because you're like you're in this moment. Mm -hmm. So I always like looking back just to say, okay, everybody's saying you gotta trust the process and like I now you have like evidence of I actually trust the process and now we're going. Yeah. So I mean and obviously like you did as well. 
Right, absolutely. And, and, and going to trade school too, like I said, I originally went for landscaping and I ended up because I had extra money and I was still living with my parents and I had money left over still. And really the college actually like, I had everything set. I had all the money. I was living with my parents and I still got grants for being under 21 and going to college. Yeah. Yeah. So they also paid me and I was like, wow, this is, this is, I was like, it made it really easy. Like yeah. extremely, like, because I applied for it, but like, I want to apply for grants. I was like, I mean, really, I don't think I'm going to get approved for anything because my parents make good money. Right, and, yeah. and like, I have a lot of money saved up from selling my business, but they're like, nope, here, they give me like, I think it was like $200 a week and like gas That's and stuff. Yeah. For all. being just 21 and going into college. So yeah. I did an extra year for doing the pest control mm -hmm. and I thought, you know, I'll just figure this out. What the heck? And that's ended up what I ended up so running. So what with. was your previous business? It was just lawn? Yeah. Just mowing lawns. Mowing I, lawns. Uh, yeah. Well, I just started, uh, I got a car at 16 and then I really realized you had to get gas to go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And my mom had a friend who mowed lawns and he had his own little business and he needed help. So I just started mowing lawns with him and I realized how that some people care more about their lawns than their house or almost anything else. Oh, and so I realized yeah. it was a really big industry. And so when I started, uh, he needed help. So I used all the money I made from him. So I still I was living home with my parents. I was like 16, 17. Yeah. And I started investing the money. I started buying shares at his company. Oh, I see. Because I wanted, okay. to be, I wanted to be part of it and help him build. And the idea was to go to school, get these things, and then come back in and help him grow that company. Um, but that didn't end up working out. Um, yeah. It all ended up working out for the better, though. Um, but I got my license. Right, you here. So yeah, but I learned even after my schooling, I still had to have a year in the spray business to get my license. And I knew I really wanted to get that license. That way I could start my own pest control company. Mm -hmm. So after I had a falling out with my other business partner, he didn't want to do it. He wanted to mow lawns. I was like, dude, I didn't go to school to mow lawns. <laughs> right. You know, like yeah. I could have, I could have kept just mowing lawns the whole time. I didn't have to go to two years of school and come back and just, you know, and I was still doing the same thing. Now, when you were 16, like talking about shares. Did you read a lot about it or did something like how did you it? learn about that or get that guidance? Uh, um I, I don't Did you know they don't teach that in school? Yeah, yeah my, not teach that in school. I, I, I just had a, a switch that flipped um in my head, I think. Well, actually no, I, I started mowing lawns for a while. I was 17 when I started buying shares. I got really bored of listening to music. And for some reason I started listening to audiobooks. And the, um, the first book uh, I listened on audio was um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon yeah. Hill. And I listened to it like 10 times. Because there's a lot of, when you're mowing lawns, I had my headphones in and I would talk, I mean, it was just, I could knock out books in a day yeah. on audio. I mean, it was like, I worked 12 hours a day and I would be listening to 12 hours a day. I just got so tired of music, I switched into books. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then just listening to Think and Grow Rich, I was like, wow, I have something it's great. It's a good book. It's yeah, good book. It, 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 it started everything for me and it got me to listen, listening to other books and things like that. And I realized, I was like, wow, I have a really good opportunity here. I should take this money while I live at home and invest into this company because if I can start something now, and you know, when I'm 17, then what could it be when I'm 25? Right. Right? So I was like, I don't want to start over. And that's um, the whole like 10 year as like yeah. Gary V said, like the last thing I, I think I sent you was like, and I think he said, you're 32, like you could be doing exactly what you love at 42. And that kind of hit me because I'm about to turn 31 and I still have the tutoring business, but now I'm going into more of like, um, like photography, editing videos, and it's kind of like, okay. Sound, audio, like. Yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like, mm -hmm. well, my thing is why, and everybody's like, oh, you gotta do everything as you're 20. It's like, no, do when you're ready. Um, I work with a coach. He started his YouTube channel when he was 40. And yeah. now he just had his first Play Fast, play fast uh, clinic. So it's kind of like, you can start whenever, but the younger, the better, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And um, reading books is obvious. I'm, and I'm, I'm not the biggest reader, I'm an audio person. I'm, I'm, I'm totally big, audio. I'm a big podcast, like, I listen to like three podcasts, and those get me motivated as well. Yeah. yeah but like stocks and stuff, I still don't understand it. Yeah, my, my dad owned his own business too, so really helped me out. Actually, my dad kind of pushed against me doing it. Um, uh, like not, the responsibility. Well, maybe? just be, well because um, that he didn't really like like the business part. He What's didn't think, his business? Your dad. Well, he used to have a valve business. Okay. Um, so he used to sell like big valves to like power plants and things. Right. So yeah. pretty serious. But um, when the crash came in two thousand eight. He lost like 60% of his business and one of wow. his biggest customers offered to buy him out and then hire him as a salesman. Hmm. So he thought, you know, that would be the best opportunity. But also I remember as a kid, when my dad had his own business, I don't even remember him being around at all. 
Yeah. I don't. I just, I just remember just my mom, and he was traveling and gone all the time, and my mom didn't have to work though. So I just remember my mom. But when he sold his business, and became a salesman. I remember a lot more of him being in my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so maybe that's what he was trying to. That, and that was us. yeah. So it, it you know it, he had a big and he saw that and he goes well you know I could just do sales for these people and still make good money and and then I think he realized he was spending a lot more time at home so he ended up not doing the business again even when things got better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and I think that's what a lot of people have to fear about, um, especially when you get older, is not being with your family. Yeah. we have, She has two daughters. I have a son that's nine months. And I guess from a social media aspect, it looks like we're never home. Mm-hmm. And people will text my wife, hey, like, Kobe's doing this now. Kobe's doing that now. Kobe's juggling all these things. Yeah. <laughs> is, he, is he ever at home? He's like, yeah, I'm at home. And it's kind of like, I guess in your dad's aspect, his business was something way bigger than what I did. Like yeah. you had to like physically yeah. be present. Yeah, in, like, other all, all the stuff that I'm doing is computer based. I can do it for my family. Yeah. Um, so I and she told me because I wanted to go to school to be a professor or a principal. Mm-hmm. Okay. And she was like, "Well, you're never going to be at home." And her thing is, I I want you home. Yeah. And I said, well, if you well, want she him, probably just wants you to be like present for yeah. him. Yeah. And you want mm-hmm. that too. Right? Yeah, and this was even before you got married. Yeah. It was yeah. just kind of like thinking, this is what she wants. What can I do? Because I, I was dead set being a principal, but I know their schedule. They're always at all the games. They're really? I didn't they're, they're, usually, that about they're all they're everywhere. Um so just thinking about it and then the two different thing kind of just came out of nowhere. It's kind of like what you said. Yeah. It just clicked. Something clicked in me and I was like, oh I'm just gonna run with this. Um, so I'm glad someone else has that clicking kind, yeah, of, yeah. kind of like mentality that just like you, someone's like, how does it happen? I don't know. Just click. It just, yeah, things, things just roll in place. As long as you, you stick on that, that same mission and thing, yeah. it, it, things will, will work out. If you just yeah. look consistently and like you said, you think and plan things through, it's not always going to be what, actually it's never what you plan. Yeah. I, I promise you can have it all planned out, written out, and it'll never work out like that. But as long as you're in that direction, mm-hmm. things will come to you and usually ends up working out for the better, which mm-hmm. is what, what happened with me because ended up my dad, because the falling out with that business partner did happen and my dad was right the whole time. I was like, no dad, you're not right. Yeah. This is what I want. Dude, I'm gonna it? own this company. This is gonna be huge, and you'll see. And then, you know, a couple of years later, I was like, okay, all right, yeah. all right, well, it, it didn't work out. <laughs> all right, you're right. You but I, I, but I needed that, and I feel like people need that lesson, though. Okay. Like, I would have never learned it from my dad telling me. I, I had to do it myself. Exactly. So yeah, I think that was still really big that I did go through that because if my yeah. dad told me, it always would have been that what if. Like I would have been in my head, oh, that could have worked out. It would have mm-hmm. been such a great thing. Exactly. So I'm glad that I went through it and it didn't end up working out. And I realized, you know, the harder way. But again, I was young. So very easy to recover, go on to something else. Right. And it, it didn't really affect me much. Only, yeah. Only lessons learned. Yeah. Right? And that's one thing. It's just like you go through it once and... It's like as long as you're going through it once and learning from that and not doing it over and over and mm-hmm. kind of like, okay, I learned my lesson. What can I do better? And some people have that, uh, I messed up once, I'll just do it again with someone else. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of something that I learned. It's like, okay, I messed up once. How did I mess up? And how can I not make this happen again? Yeah. Learn from um, your mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do have, I have well, maybe two questions. I forgot one. But I do have one about business partner. I talked to... Um, I've talked to one of my friends and she was just like, oh, you need to get a business partner. Like, how did you find a business partner and how do you, cause my, I'm a big, like, I don't trust anybody. Yeah. And like, it's kind of like you're trusting some people with like, like everything that you built or like you guys are starting, but you really don't know their intention because one, they're not like your cro- close friend. So you kind of have to like build that trust. So like, how did you build the trust? But how did you kind of connect with your business partner? So uh, I think that's a really good question, mm-hmm. by the way. Um, so, and I'll tell you, I, you know, I'm in my 20s, my business partner's in his 60s, okay. okay? So he would probably have a hard time asking these questions. Well, you know, and a lot of people ask, you know, why would you trust this 20 year old? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so he would probably have, you know, on this question, on his, I mean, for me, it's easier to trust someone in their, in their sixties who's been through it and things. Mm-hmm. It's like, ah, oh, he has all that experience. It's great. It's probably a lot harder on his side to go, man, I'm going to partner up with a 20 year old. Like, yeah. you know, so, um, on his side, it's probably a lot harder for him to do. But for me, um, I, I knew him decently. Um, but as well as he's the one that brought the product up to me and explained the science and everything. He's owned his own landscape. He owned his own landscaping business here. Um, he owned another business, uh, you know, uh, back in uh, where he lived in Wisconsin. So I know he's owned several businesses, and um, I knew him a little bit. And I, I just, 
Uh, I mean, you, you can never know for sure, um, but from what I knew is that he was a really good guy and that he had good, did have good intentions. Um, and everything he showed me. I mean, I, and at the time, I had nothing to lose. How really, long did you know him before you decided? So I worked, when I worked my first spray job after I left mowing lawns, I worked for a company called Bug Out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I started, yeah, they're a big company here. Um, I worked for them when they were a local company. Unfortunately, they're not anymore. But I started just spraying lawns. It's really weird how I met him because I was, uh, I had a long, really long day. And I had one more yard to do and I could have easily done it the next day. But for, and I could have just gone home and easily done it the next day. It would have not been a problem. For some reason, I was like, no, I just, I gotta go get this done. I'm here, I'm gonna do it. And it was like really late in the day. And so I go and there's dudes working in the yard. And I was like, oh, you know, just knowing me, I was like, I'm gonna go talk to them. So I start talking to these guys and ended up being, it's my business partner now, but ended up being him, he owned a landscape business and they were doing landscaping at the house. Wow. And so we just started talking and he realized, and this was just right after I got out of school, left mm -hmm. my mowing job. And he realized, like, wow, this dude knows a lot. So I knew a lot about the turf and things. And he tried to hire me. And I told him, I said, no, I can't. I got to work here to get my license because I want to start my own spray company one day. So I was like, I have to get this license. So he's like, okay, well, let's, um, let's, exchange, let's, uh, let's exchange business because he did landscaping and I did spraying. Mm -hmm. So we exchanged business cards and we referred each other business for like a year. And eventually I left Bug Out and went to work for another company on the other side of town and we didn't talk for like two years. Yeah. So we knew each other for the year and every time we did, he was super nice, uh, super good guy. I and mean, we always exchanged business. It was great. So like, uh, a year later is when he randomly, like two years later is when he randomly called me. So I haven't, I haven't seen him from then, yeah. um, from then. So it was kind of, but I knew he's a really good guy and I know he's run a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know he's been successful and things so like that. So you just that. had that, you had that trust for him because of that. He had like the experience and the yeah. knowledge. Right. He's and elderly, sort of, well, I don't know how elderly, but. Well, and he kind of remembered you as well. Yes. So it's yeah. kind of like he, he remembered, he thought about you and he came back. Yeah, and that's, that's I guess great. that's a good thing of finding out. Okay, so he he did think about think about me, and he did take his time to come back, mm -hmm. even after we had a conversation. After I even said no to him. Yeah, and so that's a big thing. Is he saying, probably also saw that you followed through like your your plans. Yeah, and yeah. He, he thought that that's very trustworthy. Yeah, I, absolutely. And, and and like I said, I, I, we really had nothing to lose too. Mm -hmm. So it was like when we started, it's like you said, I trust a business part. I think it would be hard like if I had all of what we have now to bring somebody in, mm -hmm. that would be scary because I have a lot of assets and things and I have something to lose. Right. But at the time is, you know, I wouldn't, um, after he called me, I had dinner with him the night, he showed me all the signs. I mean, he's great. His, his wife's, I ended up living with him for a year to get our business started actually. Wow, cool. So yeah, so I mean, really and, got and, and he, well, he's the type of guy, he'll do anything for anybody. I mean, yeah. he owns his landscape business. He does so much for his guys that he doesn't have to do, and, and sometimes he gets screwed doing it, but he, he will still do it. Mm -hmm. he'll, he'll put a helping hand to anybody at any time. Um, I mean, That's he, a good way to and, and you can, I'm really good at getting vibes on people. Yeah. Like, and, and, and a lot of people who read books and things, I think they, they do. Like, I know right away if somebody, if I don't get a good vibe, but I'm like, my, my gut has been right, I'd say like 90% of the time. Yeah. yeah. And, and I just had a good feeling. And, and when we did it, we went and bought like a Harbor Freight pump. I mean, we were only like $250 in when we started. I mean, yeah. and I was like, let's just go. That know, is something I want to touch on. Yards. So how did you start, since uh, financials is one of our topic, like, did you guys take out a loan for anything? Were you all just no? So um, cash, basically. Yes. Was it like half and half, or how did it work? Especially yeah. with the business part. Uh, it, it, what we did is, it, 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 I mean, it was as half as half as it could be, um, but it, it really wasn't. We kind of just tracked our capital. Okay. Uh, of and, and things like that and as the business will make money make sure which, it was fair. yeah so as the business makes money we're gonna get make sure we get paid back on whatever we put in mm -hmm. um, so the way we did is we just bought um, equipment and like I said he has a landscaping business so we had a small customer base yeah okay. so we kind of used them to test and things like that and that's what we grew off of and um, at the time I was like 21 or 22 so I couldn't get loans yeah um, no bank would give me loans right. or anything like yeah. that so uh, but they would give me credit cards so I had a bunch of high interest credit cards but that's what I used so I used, I had, I had a lot of money in savings too. So I used, uh, I drained my savings um, and I used a bunch of, and that pretty much used, were, were, you, were you scared about that? <laughs> I feel like I should have been, but I really wasn't. You um, felt it. You took the lead. Yeah. I, I felt I, it. Now that I think about it, I really should have been because I saved so much, but at the time it just, it just felt so right. And it was just, and this is always what I wanted to do. This opportunity came. I was just like. I was just full blown into it. I was, yeah. uh, you know, I felt like I should have been more careful with it and maybe I could have done it without such high interest of the cards, 
but I was just, things were just happening, and I was so excited. And you did what just, you could with what you were offered. Yep, yep, so. so we took out no loans or anything. We started with just capital that we have and credit cards, and well, I used my credit cards to pay my rent for a while, yeah. and, and eventually my, my lease was running out, and I was running out of money, my credit cards were getting maxed out, so then I lived with him for a year. You know, he, he has a, a daughter, a wife, you know, um, and a dog, so I lived with a full family. You know, he brought me in and let me live with a, a full family for a year, and I had a, a bedroom there. It's also going to say something about how well you guys work together that you were able to live with your business partner. Yeah. You know, because that's hard to do. It's hard to have a roommate in general. Yes. It was. It, it, it was great at first, but after a while, it did get hard to do because well, I was in their space. Right. Um, you know, and, and I really tried to but res you grew, respect you that. you were probably able to you know, branch off on your own once it got to a point. Yes. You know? Yeah, which we did. Well, the year, well, the rule was a year. Yeah. You know, I got one year. Let's mm -hmm. grow this, get this together, and I got to get out of there. Yeah. In which the year came up, I was I was ready, too. Perfect. Because all I had was my own bedroom. And it was yeah. really tough because our office is at, at his house. Mm -hmm. So what he a lot of what he brings to the table is, um, first off, he does a lot of the, the office and computer stuff and the finances. Mm -hmm. That's not me. I yeah. love to drive around. I love to talk to my customers. I have the lawn knowledge. So that's what I do. He knows um, he knows basic marketing. He can he's really good at Photoshop, so he can make pamphlets and flyers himself, so we don't have to pay somebody to do it. Yeah. Um, he understands the finances and things like that. So balance each other out. So he's really good at that. So he's in the office a lot. He does that, and I'm out in the field all the time. He doesn't even have the lawn knowledge I have, and yeah. I don't have the finance, and and plus I can't sit in the office all day. Yeah, that's so hard for me yeah. to do. Right. I feel like I would rather work outside in 100 degree heat than sit in an office all day. I think I think sitting inside all day is a lot harder. I got a mixture of both. I could, yeah, I could do both. I mean, I'm a pretty like, happy medium too. Yeah, I mean, being a teacher, like, because I've worked in elementary, so you're you're inside, and then you have recess. Mm -hmm. Some days at recess, I'm like, I just want to be inside. Yeah. But then some days at recess, I'm like, let's go play kickball, let's play basketball. Yeah. So it just depends on the day with me, um, mm -hmm. and what I'm wearing. So if I'm like really dressed up. I'm kind of like, I want to be inside. Yeah. That's pretty cool though. So you can get to go in and come out and Yeah, that's the that's the positive element. High school you don't really I mean, um, I stay in my portable, so like when I do leave, everybody's like something happening. Like, <laughs> I'm like, ah. Do your kids go crazy in the classroom when you walk out, like to go to the bathroom or something? Like high school. I always remember that in high school, like the teacher would walk no, out and I think people like act out. I think with me is a I feel like a lot of students still don't know who I am. Like oh, I'm my second year there, oh. so they just know me by the teacher that sits on. I stay on my um, my porch because like I make sure there's no facts <laughs> or anything. Yeah. And so like if I do leave it's during lunch and like a principal came up to me, and he was like, "Something wrong?" I was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "You're out of your room." I was like, eh, "I mean, some days I gotta come. In. I gotta come out of my room sometimes." But yeah, I, I usually stay in my room. I'm not a big. My wife likes me on the lawn. Yeah. <laughs> She'll she'll know it in hundred degrees. She's like, we gotta get it done. I'm like, go ahead. I'll, <laughs> Do you, Google? Boo -boo. I'll stay Take in the house. house. Yeah, she uh, she actually mowed it when she was pregnant, and wow. she posted it on social media. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you say did. That. Oh man. <laughs> and then my friends put in the group chat. They're like, so you're letting your pregnant wife mow the lawn? I was like, I'm at work. She likes it. <laughs> and plus, it was cool. So it's not like she's out there like yeah. dying or yeah. killing herself. I'm sure she likes it too because you know. When you're pregnant, like you just want to get out of the house and like use that little bit of energy you can, yeah. and it feels good to like exert that. But then after that, you're just like, okay, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. The rest of the day. I'm done for the rest of the day. Yeah, like leave me alone. It's pretty funny. Oh. So, what else did we have to talk about? Oh, I wanted to talk about um, getting legit. So, becoming licensed and insured, and and not like. I mean, in the beginning, it's it's one thing to like try to like, gain your clientele, yeah. not licensed and insured, but it's really important to to get that that paperwork because you know you don't want to be in a position where the IRS comes after you, you know, and, and stuff like that. And you, and it's kind of like, oh my gosh. So like, because exactly. you started younger, so did you get all of your paperwork done then, or did you just like? How did you yeah. figure out about the paperwork? Mm -hmm. uh, it was, um, it was, was like, did you start off like, I'm sorry to drop, or did you like start off as like an LLC or what? Yeah, well, how'd you start? So we actually, well, so for me, I had to get my license that because, because we use, even though we use more organic stuff, we're not treated any differently from the state. Yeah. The state treats us just as like, just like any of the other chemical guys. So, um, so I had to be licensed. I had to be insured by the state to even be able to buy products and even do this. So it was actually really hard for my schooling. I learned what licenses I need. 
it was actually really, really hard to find out from the state how to get those licenses and take those tests and things like that. So um, that was my first step I had to do. But luckily, I worked for a company, and I made them pay for everything. Yes. Because I got it underneath them, yeah. so I got my licensing through them, and you know, because for them it helps you know me move what up. What's that place. called? Uh, like, is it called something for for pest and for? Yeah, so it is my. Um, it's a, called an applicator's card. Okay. Um, so what I can do is people can work on people work underneath my license. Okay. Um, so what like they a contractor. Yeah, pretty much like a contractor. So, so people can work because my employees they get they get a card um, mm -hmm. as well, but they're underneath me. I take all the responsibility. You're like the umbrella. Exactly. So what happens is like if, if spills or things happen or we're doing things illegal, mm -hmm. like my employees they might get a little fine or something or slap on the wrist from the state. But I can. It's, it's a lot of things we could do is are felonies. I can exactly. get up to twenty thousand dollar fines and up to five years in jail. And so it all and, and that's what makes the owner responsible. Mm -hmm. And that's why we can't franchise this company out legally and things like that because I'm the license holder. Mm -hmm. So through the license that I take responsibility and that's what makes you know business owners make sure that their technicians are everything because if their technician screws up, their technician gets a slap on the wrist. The owner that holds the, I, the license is the one who takes the test and did all the work. So they're the one that gets the true penalty, mm -hmm. can go to jail and things like that. So those are the things I had to do first. Yeah. Um, and that's why I work for other people. Yeah. So I worked for other people. I went and got all those licenses. And they paid for that. And they paid, they, yeah. Like, like how much do you think that probably costed them? Um, it was like two grand. Okay. Yeah. That's not bad. Well, if you're young, then I guess. Yeah, but, but he did the smart thing. He yeah. got it, you know, paid for by another company, and then he was able to branch off from it. And yeah, and, and we, so we did this thing which made our taxes a pain. So the first year, because my business partner already had a landscaping company. Mm -hmm. So we became a DBA yeah. of his landscape company. So we oh. used his insurance because uh -huh. we had to have insurance. So so one insurance policy was covering two companies. Right. So, but it was a very weird setup by taxes and things because we were just we were a DBA of his landscape company. So he filed those taxes all under one. Yeah. So it, it became. And we we only did that till Turf Organics could get enough to become its own entity. But then yeah. then we split and we became an uh, LLC. Yeah. And then we got our own insurance yeah. and things yeah. like that. Uh, but that's a way that was kind of like a little loophole again that we used because it was like cost. We really don't have money. Cost. And I quit my job pretty early. Mm -hmm. um, to jump into it full time, it was uh, it was a it was a big gamble. The money yeah. and things weren't so really there. So now you guys there. have it all separated. Yes, now okay. everything's completely separate. So we actually use though the same logos for both companies. Really? But their name, his landscape company is called Live Aloha. And we're Turf Organics. Live so, Aloha. Yeah, I like that. yeah, they're from Hawaii. So um, that's kind of so they're in, into that. So they they're into all that Hawaii stuff and yeah. tropical love yeah, yeah. And, and stuff like that. Especially <laughs> his, his wife. I love really that. Is, I'm gonna meet this guy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and his wife. They're they're and they're they're, they're great people. Like I said, if you meet them, you would probably be like oh, that person could be my business partner after meeting for a couple hours. I mean, they're, <laughs> you know, they're they're good people. So that, again, going back to that, that's how I, how I kind of got that. But yeah. we use both companies like that. And they market for each other, even though they're totally separate. So now what we do is like the office is at his house. His company pays for half. My company pays for half. So like I'll show you guys this. I know on a podcast you can't see it, but if you look at the business cards, yeah, we got a camera. Yeah, if you look at the business, yeah, if you look at, at the business yeah. cards, one side's his, one side's mine for oh, the companies. Wow. So we split cost on them. We do the same thing for like our flyers and pamphlets and everything. We we put both companies on, so both companies split the cost. Both companies split the cost for the office. Our office manager nice. who we hire, she works for both companies, so the hours are split between her. So that's how I can kind of we can have a little bit more because both comp we're, we're we're sharing yeah. the companies are sharing spaces and, and you're, yeah and you're pretty much promoting both and, and we're promoting both and, and and I like it too because it's funny people they're don't go hand in hand yeah and, and people don't exactly so like when I send up a turf organics customer they need landscaping they get landscaping after they do a big landscaping job I come in and I and hey we have the perfect company that can keep everything looking good so then we come in Boom. and we do that so Money. so they work well for each other but also it's funny because a lot of people don't know that we don't notice the names are different and that yeah. we're separated. So I get all the time from people like, oh, I see your trucks all the time. Well, Turf Organics really only has one truck. Yeah. And it, will, and it has another truck, but I don't have logos on my other truck yet. Yeah. So, but they see all the landscaping trucks and they see our trucks. So they see like, people they like, oh, I, I see you guys all the time. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I don't. But yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that's how smart he is to know like, oh, let's just put it on both. It's like, mm -hmm. it's, yep. it's pretty much, you're pretty much double dipping 
without really people knowing that you're double dipping. Yeah, and, and, and now we've got it off of different books and everything, so it's so now it's not all intertwined and crazy. It's just intertwined within shared spaces, but books and finances are totally separate companies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So but we treat them as the same, and, and we give that benefit to our customers too. Right. So we you know we call them sister companies. So mm-hmm. our customers get the benefit because they can call the same office and get the landscaping and get the spraying, but they're actually separate. So customers are benefiting heavily from it, from not having to deal with two people or feel like they're being contracted out. Right. You know, as if it's like, oh yeah, we'll do the saw job, and then they hire Live Aloha to do the saw job, and then Bill's landscaping company comes out and starts throwing the saw down. And they're like, what, yeah. what, what, what the heck? Because a lot of people right. do that. Yeah. Like I did sales for um, a pest control company, and that's how they did their landscaping. We would sell it, but they would just uh, they would bid it out to other people who would do it for cheaper and make the and profit. And then people, yeah, and then people would be like, well, I hired you because I liked your company, and I thought you guys were going to do it. And they caught a lot of flack for it, and yeah. people were really disappointed. It's like I liked your company, but. You guys sub it out. Really it's not really your company. So yeah. when we do this, people see like, oh, it actually is the company that is doing it. They mm-hmm. really, really like that. So they get that a big benefit really, from it's it. It's a cool business concept. Yeah. You know, Especially I like, really like that. Yeah, because it's kind of similar to what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Jackson Entrepreneurs, um, but we both also do stuff together. Um, like she's a photographer. Mm-hmm. Um, you can say I'm a photographer, but I do other things as well, like tutoring and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. If they find Jackson Entrepreneurs, they're gonna find her um, photography, photography business, and then they'll find my tutoring business. Yep. And then they'll say, oh, what else does he do? Oh, he edits videos. Oh, he can take my son's basketball pictures. Oh, he can do podcasts. Yeah, yeah. he can do podcasts. <laughs> um, so Which you have like three of them, so. I have three, but you know, whatever. Um, Colby, so, the podcast plug. Yeah, okay. wow, a podcast came over here. <laughs> and some, yeah, I don't worry. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I have three, and it's just one of those things that um, you just figure out what you what what you want to do, and um, and just as you said, you just jump right in. Yeah. Um, obviously, with us, we have a family, um, so it's kind of like we do have to think about our family first and make sure, okay, this is what I want to do. Like, I'm not trying to put a strain on anybody. Yeah. Um, obviously, they come first. And granted, I have a good wife that allows me to do a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Same. And shout out, husband. Yes, yeah, shout out to the <laughs> wife. Because I, I talked to her one day, and she was like, I know what you do, but I actually don't know what you do. And I'm like, I yeah. try to tell you, but you're like, eh. But now she's like, she's into it now. Yeah. And she's like, she's listening to it. And like, I just did a podcast yesterday with my coach. And I was like, the first 30 minutes you're going to really like, after that, you're not going to want to listen to. So, um, so, yeah, if you have like someone, like a family or just, you know, people that support you, then just be around those people. Because mm-hmm. everybody else is going, oh, you don't hang out anymore. I said, like, well, I have to live. Yeah. And this is what I like. And eventually it'll get to the point to where I can hang out more. Yeah. Um, so that's my little rant. <laughs> but you know, honestly, like as I've, as I've gotten older, not that I'm like, you know, the old wise queen or anything, <laughs> but you know, I'm just so much less interested in like hanging out and do nothing, doing nothing. And now I'm just so like goal oriented, you know, yeah. like I'm constantly thinking about what I can do here and what I can do there to better myself and my family and my, that's what my, my happiness, that's where my happiness comes from is my family being happy. I like to juggle like 17 things at a time mm-hmm. and, and do good. Just, yeah, and support them. But you said something that got me back to you. What? You started when you were young. Yeah. Uh-huh. So how do you... Because usually everybody's like, oh, live your teens, do this. But you were just like... You were like, no, I'm um, business. I'm business. It, it could have, and I'm, my first thought is it came from your dad. But I feel like it might have just like kind of clipped with you. So how did you know like at that young of age that, you know, I'm going to do lawns. Obviously, you said it for the gas for your car. But then you like, you already had like maybe your five-year plan or 10-year plan. Like how did you know that? At such a young age, I mean, I, I really well. I I can tell you, like, I lived a lot before everybody else, and that was my biggest benefit. Like, I was like in middle school, like I was getting in trouble. I was doing things people are doing now in college, and I got a lot of like. I remember when I was in middle school, I was already drinking and smoking, and nobody else was. And I was an outcast for it, yeah. you know, and um, 
And my brother got me a lot of it. I have a four year brother, four year old, you know, four years yeah. older than me, so he was doing those things. Oh, and I, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, and so I got kind of dragged, I got dragged into it, but I'll have to tell you, so I was like, in middle school, I was a troubled child. Yeah. But each year, as I got, like, it got less and less and less. And then, same thing in high school, I didn't care about my grades or anything. All I did was drink, smoke, party, hang with friends. So, like, I actually got all that out of the way, kind of. And it was, I think it was actually a great thing. Like, my, my parents haven't even you know, worried about me and, and stuff like that, but especially my mom. But it ended up working out so well because as it was funny because as everyone who made fun of me was getting into those things, I was getting out of them. I kind of got over like I already did all that. I was over You're it. Like, and then, yeah, that was fun, but never Yeah, and I, and I and I just realized like I said, I just started mowing lawns and and just like the hard work. So, something in the hard work just like no, I, I, yeah, it just yeah. gave me such a feeling. I remember like because in, in summertime when I was a kid, I used to go party every night. And then I got this job, and I worked Monday through Friday, and I busted my butt out doing landscaping. It wasn't easy work, so I wouldn't go and party. I was like, I'm exhausted. I can't go. And then when I go on the weekends, like, it was almost a lot more fun. Like, it was like, wow. And, like, everyone was excited to mm -hmm. see me. Yeah. And, like, it was this thing. I was like, wow, like, that feels really good to work hard all week. Yeah. And then kind of enjoy this weekend. And yeah. Then, and then I just knew from when I just started working, for some reason, just something clicked in my head that I – I knew I was made not to work for anybody. I don't know what or how it happened. I just knew I was like, I'm, I'm gonna start my own business one day. Like I'm gonna have my own thing. Like, yeah. well, again, and my job gave me a lot of time by myself. Like when yeah. I was going long and doing landscaping, like I had my headphones in. And I had huge headphones over, yeah. so I couldn't hear all the loud equipment. And I just had a lot of. I think a lot of people miss a lot of time with themselves, yeah. and I think that's a huge thing. And that's what gave me to become me because I was influenced by other people. I really got to grow and learn myself and learn to be and learn to be okay. Yeah. And be myself because, like, when I was in high school, I drank and partied. I didn't, I didn't work out. Um, I, I had a, a relationship and ended up being in it for too long and ended up not working out. And, and I was just being toxic to myself, you yeah. know. And then the people I was, and then I was just using instead for like realizing, like, hey, you're not being healthy and doing these things to yourself. I would go out and hang out with my friends and party. It's a really good way to avoid things that you need to think about mm -hmm. and things you need to fix yourself. It's very easy to avoid those things when you're surrounded by people or you go out and you have fun. So it's just, I was just constantly staying distracted. And once the time I finally stopped being distracted, it was just, I just had time to think to myself and I really found out who I was. I don't know where it came from. My dad never pushed me to be a business owner. My dad never pushed me to do what he did. He never pushed me anything like that. Yeah. Um, it just, it, Finding my own time and being by myself like uh, really was the trick. And then I went when I moved out, I lived on my own for two and a half years, which I really miss now because now I have a roommate just for financial reasons. Yeah. yeah. But um, when I lived on my own for those two years, it was the most amazing two years of my life. Like I actually made a whole video about it, like the living by yourself. Like I actually didn't have my friends hated coming over. My friends came over like three times because I didn't even have a couch or a TV. My whole living room was my office. I made it a giant office and I put up goal boards and vision boards and it, and that it, became, is so it awesome. became all my space for me and I got to do my own thing. No one could judge me. No one could say anything. You know, no one came yeah. over when my house was boring, <laughs> but I didn't care. It was just totally my space and I just got time to be creative and, and just yeah. do things. I really found out who I was because I was okay with being alone. I think so many people miss that and they, yeah. they become so dependent Absolutely. on people. Um, like especially with friends or people who jump from relationship to relationship. Like being in a relationship is great. And if you find that significant other that helps you, like a lot of the books I've read at successful people, like they have a wife or a husband, like that significant other pushed them and it really helped them become who they are. So uh -huh. that's a different scenario. But I see a lot of people, they jump, they, they you know, they date people for five months and then they're, they're single for a week or two and then they're dating someone else and dating someone else. They don't know who they are and they're never going to because they always feel like they need someone else or they're always distracting themselves from those issues. Yeah. yeah. So I really felt like, which is really weird, mowing lawns, but just the, the type of job of being alone and being by myself, I just had time to think. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and I started going to the gym. Like, I don't know what made me go to the gym, but I started working out. And then from working out, you started eating healthy. And from eating healthy, your brain starts functioning better. You start listening to more books. And then that's what led to vision boards and things like that. And just, just positively it, fueling Yeah, yourself. it just kept going on and on from there. And I just... It, it, that's it, a great, like, growth story, though. Like, I yeah. really like that. And, I mean, obviously the key, like, the, the key word of everything now is, like, your mental health. Yeah. And you, you found that out very early. Mm -hmm. And as a teacher, this is kind of like a teacher question is like when you got into all that stuff do you think it's because like your dad wasn't there or do you think it was just like one of those like I'm just gonna do it because my brother you or know, like just doesn't... like what influenced you to like you know have all your fun at a young age to the point where like 
when you were older, you were able to like focus, you know, you're like, man, I don't want to have, I don't want to do all that anymore. You know what I mean? Well, like, and, and I, I saw a lot of my, my brother made a lot of mistakes, you know, and my brother's actually doing really well now, which is awesome because his mistakes lasted a lot longer than I did, but I learned and saw a lot of the things he did. And okay. I was like, man, so those, that those, those, yeah, I was like, I was like, wow, those outcomes aren't very good. <laughs> like those, yeah. That yeah. didn't really work out well for him. And I, I kind of, you know, when I was young, I didn't, I didn't realize that I was falling into those things, you know, young, I just did. But then as I got older and like you can actually start getting in serious trouble and things. Like in your later teens. Right. Well, like, I saw he, you know, he got kicked out of high school and he had to go to a military school to finish. And I was like, I don't want to go to military yeah. school. You know what I mean? And I, and I saw like a lot of the things and, and he ended up getting in a bad space and ended up getting really bad with my family. And so he kind of got exiled from the family for a little bit because of, of really bad things. And I just saw all that and I was like. Uh, I really learned what not to be, you know, right. you know and, and that maybe sometimes just as good as learning what to be. Luckily, my brother did find out he's doing great now, so great. but for yeah. a while he wasn't, and it was really teaching me pretty much through my high school years of what not to be and so what not to do. you had an example, do. like pretty much an example of like what, like you, what you don't do want to do, and yeah. you know, it helped you gear towards Right, and, 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 once you, and once you get in that mindset too, it's like you, you just want more, you want better for yourself. And like, Absolutely. Like it's where a lot of the thoughts I have is like for my significant other, like I'm single, I've been single for like six years, really focusing and working on myself, which is great because I can do what I want when I want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right now, and, and, and too, that's why I'm hustling so hard, it's like now's my time. Like, Absolutely. I have like almost no responsibilities, I don't even have a pet, you know? But it's like, I could literally be gone, I could be gone, I could be gone for weeks, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, and I don't have to come back, right. I, don't have, I don't have a, you know, I mean, I'd love to see my, my dad and my mom and things, but mm -hmm. you know, other than that, I don't have kids, I don't have pets, I can I can really do those things, so it's like, it got Dude, me to really My husband is car. begging me for a dog, like literally begging <laughs> me, and I'm like, look, we have, dogs are, are harder than babies to me. Like, puppies are. Puppy, yeah, but like I, I have two grown dogs, so I mean they, you can't they, like take them with you everywhere. You, can, you, you can know, and, and just like he said, you can't like go on trips and be like, oh, then I need to come back and let my dog out. You mm -hmm. can't do that. Then you, you have know? to find people to watch. I mean, that's like granted, my family lives close, so I have someone that can come over, mm -hmm. take them out, or just drop them off. Yeah, the house. because leaving them at like like one of the vet things is expensive. Yeah, and my dogs don't get along with other dogs. That's another so, thing. It's, it's that. also financial, and I'm like, look, I just got so many more gold going on. You think I'm not a dog person, but I love dogs. I just don't want the responsibility of a dog right now. Yeah, not yet. You know, uh, like it's, it, it's a lot. When I see a lot of people too, like when I hang out with friends or things, when I do things, like oh, I got, I can't, I got to go back, I got to take my dog out and things, yeah. and it's like, and then like I'm, I'm, you know, selfish me. Like, like my friends, like oh, I got to go with my girlfriend stuff. You know, I have none of those yeah. things. I'm like, you guys are ruining all the fun. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it's um, like, oh, uh, you know, yeah. But, especially with like you doing your business, you have to find someone that is compatible with like. Um, wherever like where you are like, where you're at like, that's yeah. that's actually been the the hardest part is you're um, already so much further than people your age right and, and, and I find a lot of, it's really hard to find someone because I, I'm, I'm gonna, I need to find someone just as busy as me because usually yeah. I, when I do find people I they always I don't give them enough attention they want all your and time. attention that they you know and, and they deserve attention I feel and I tell always I'm always joking like hey it's you know and they deserve that attention but it's like I just can't offer that right now yeah. and, and if they're not busy enough themselves where they can understand that it'll never work out I because, exactly. because I'm sitting there and, and, and I tell them, and like to be honest, my business is first to me right now in my life. Yeah. You know, I mean, besides like my, you know, my close family, but like my business comes first. Even like right now before a relationship, like that's that's my baby. Like I, if I have to miss a dinner because something called for my business, I will. Oh, you yeah. know, and I, and I'm, that's what the point I'm at right now. Hopefully, you know, one day it switches. But I, I just want to, too, I think about later down my life, like, I want to be able, when I do have a family, I want to be able to give them the things that they want. And that's yeah. what I'm, I'm building a better life for my future. And that's how I think about it, because, like, the vision board really helps. I got because, a question. When you, when did you, like, start the business? Like, what year? Um, it would be, it'll be three years this April. So, so would, would you be, say you're, like, in the, the walking stage of, like, like, like a baby's learning to walk? Yes. Oh, your, well, your business is your baby. Your baby's learning to walk. Yes. Right yes. Absolutely. Well, I, I'm really not even like, I don't feel legit until five years because most businesses fail under five years. Right. So just making it to five years is a big goal in myself. And like, mm -hmm. then I'll feel like, wow, okay, like we're a real business. I mean, we actually have a lot of those steps where even when we, like I said, when we left to make our own LLC, it's like, wow, we're a real business here. Mm -hmm. But yes, absolutely. When I moved out and like, 
between like the past like year and a half, I, we, my business partner and I have been able to give ourselves like three raises. Good. And it's like really Good. nice. Like money's still really, really tight, but it was really nice to finally see something because mm-hmm. I mean, we've been treading water for just so long and there's still so many challenges that come up, but it's absolutely just the walking station. It's just nice to see like little things. Well, and like my, my new truck, I have like a, I have a, I have a nice truck now. Before I drove really crappy and it's hand roll windows, manual locks. And it's funny because we used to do a lot of work for a big chain company. And when I would go there, I would see the people that worked at like a basic store and they had nicer cars than me. You know yeah. what I mean? And it was hard to see sometimes. And it's like, man, you know, I'm in this, this, and it wasn't a beater truck. But you know what? I'm going to reference Gary V right now because he says, you know, drive that piece of crap <laughs> and live in that studio apartment and cut your finances because like, especially in your you know, age where, yeah. you know, you don't have a girlfriend right now, which is not a problem because you're focusing on your business. Yeah. Like, you're just so goal oriented that all those things don't matter. They're just superficial, anyways. Right, right. You know, but ultimately, it's nice to reward yourself for all the hard work. Well, it, yeah, it's just, it, it felt good when I got that truck, which we needed it for work. But it was like I had finally had something I was proud of to drive. And right. It like, yeah. It felt and, and it was and and I manufactured all of it through through the business. Yeah. You know what I mean? This business was enough to get me to something that I I actually enjoy to drive and I'm not. And I was embarrassed in my other truck, but it was just like. Like I said, hand roll windows, manual yeah. locks, you know what so I mean? So it was kind of like a step up for you, like, for your, like, person, personal, how do I say Personally. It? Yeah. And yeah. Then it's, it, but it's also for your business as well. So yeah. it's kind of like you get two out, you get two in one. Yeah. Um, so you're, like, you get and you, like, get out of your house every day, oh, look at that great truck. And it's like, oh, it's my business truck as well. Yeah. So kill two birds with one. Well, it's like my, my, my business, you know, what I've done with my business afforded me to have this opportunity to drive something I'm proud of. And, yeah. like, and it makes it mean that much more to Absolutely. me. It makes you want to work harder. Right. right. It makes, it makes me want to keep going. It's like, yeah. this is, and this is like only the first step. And two, it's like, I never even, but when I was driving that truck, like, I said, I always look at people's cars, and but, but I always knew, like, this this is what I got to do now. This is what I'll do. And it even came before I even thought. You know what I mean? So I, as long as I stay focused, like, the, the nice truck that I'm proud to drive, like, I didn't think I would have it within under three years of owning this business. I got do. it. I got it. Yeah, and I did. It just, it, it all ended up you, working out. You've been, like, you know. You trusted the process. Right. Yes. Trust yeah, that's what I tell everybody. I tell even parents. Like, you're going to get tutored. Don't expect like a turnaround next week. It's you have to be consistent. You can't mm-hmm. just do like unless you're just doing a test. Yeah. But if you want them to actually grow, you have to trust the process and be consistent with what you're and, doing. Well, and, and you do have to like sacrifice a lot. Like this, what got me like to go on my own. Um, when, when I finally made the step on my own, like when the business started going, I was working seven days a week. I was working a full time job, and Saturday and Sunday I was working on my business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, and I almost saw like for like eight months, I saw like no friends, like. No family, but I was living by myself, which was honestly, this was all a great time for me because it was all time to be me, be with myself, focused. Yeah. I worked, went to the gym, worked, went to the gym. That was pretty much it. Um, but it was it was such a good process and, and a step going through that. And like I made myself, like I made myself goals. Like what I did is, as I said, when I got to a point, I got really tired of working seven days a week. I said, I really need to step it up. So I was like, I'm going to go completely sober until I'm self-employed. So I didn't drink any alcohol. It was eight months. I went eight months completely sober. So that and that made me not go out with friends. Yeah. And also, I didn't have the money. And I would tell people, it's like, like, hey, I, I'm not even drinking. I don't have money for drinks. I don't have money to do anything. Like, I can't. Like, sorry, no. And I did that for like eight months. Uh, really, I wish I still do that a lot now. But like eight months, I did it so extremely. I was so focused, so driven, so uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, I, yeah, yeah. I was so. There's um, a word. Podcasters, if you're listening, uh, it was uh, it <laughs> was like a, um, I was so uh, self-motivated. Not self-motivated. Disciplined. I was so yes. di- I was there so it was being it was being super disciplined, like no alcohol, no going out, no doing this until I become fully self. And some people don't have that discipline. Mm-hmm. They won't make the sacrifice. They won't. Well, that and they'll do it, and they'll make it maybe like a week, and then like okay, well I. Right. Yeah, and can't do it. Well, what Gary Vee says, now that I look at it, that was eight months of my life for what could be a potential benefit for the rest of my life. Yeah. Eight months is nothing. And some people, people, people usually sacrifice what I did for five years. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was lucky it was only eight months. I mean, people work harder for way longer. Yeah. So it was, and now that I look at it, eight months, now I am here three years of owning the business. 
um, that eight months was easy. I would have, you know, I would have done two years to yeah. be where I'm at today. And some people that. don't really see um, the end goal. Yeah. They kind of just see like, oh, what they have to go through. Yeah, and it's kind of like the they can't, parts. they can't make it through the first like eight months is just like that was hard for you. Yeah. Some people can't even last a week. Yeah. So it's just understanding like having that vision board, as you said. Um, and speaking of vision boards, I saw something about The Rock, and he had a vision board, mm -hmm. which got me thinking, maybe I need a vision board, but I don't think I do. I don't know. Maybe we'll do it. Do it. I don't know. It's we'll a good see. idea. Use I your mean, mirror that's great. in your bathroom. Yeah. Right on your mirror in your bathroom, that can be your vision board. Yeah. You look at that every morning. Well, I have, what I do is every year, I write goals for my 2020. Oh, that's right. I've so seen those. Every since I think it was 2017, I started. Yeah, I got it, it from Ryan Faber, USC Fire, USC Fiber, and like he used to just write stuff on notes, put it around his room, yep. and then once he got it, he crossed it out. So I was like, I'll do it as a year. I put stuff that I know I can make, but then I put stuff that I'd have to work to get to. Mm -hmm. um, if I don't make it that year, I'll just add it to next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so I have that that is on my I guess you can say that's my vision board. Yeah. Is I come, yeah, up, no, I come, I come up with you goals that, that yeah, I come up with goals that I need to exceed. Kind of like two years ago was getting tutors online, like doing online tutoring because I know everything's going online, and it was hard because yeah. parents are just like, my kid can't learn online, like they need someone here. I'm like, trust me, it'll work. And so far, it's, I have now like, you have thirty tutors. Yeah, Where'd something like that. Wow, and wow. Like five of them go to FSU. So, wow. but yeah, no, it's it's. It's trusting the process and being disciplined and mm -hmm. seeing the end goal and even if you don't see an end goal just keep going because then it'll just process in your head yeah. of like what you want to do like i also like what he said earlier about paying attention to yourself like a lot of times like even if you're young or old like you get so distracted with everything that's going on mm -hmm. in your life or or other people's lives which is how social media is these days it's telling you everything about everyone all the time like you don't you don't really like tune it out and like really listen to yourself and like what you want, what you want to do. Right. Like make the sacrifices, pay attention to yourself, and and do those things that you want to do because it's possible. Yeah. You know, like you don't need that nice car. You can drive a and little I, 2006 yeah. Honda Civic and start your dreams. And I've you I've, know? I've told my students because I have some students and I've I've bought their Jeep, lifted it. Had the oh, yeah, years. Yeah. I, I tell my kids because they're like, you know, I'm gonna buy a BMW, I'm gonna do this. I said, I've done, I've bought the nice cars, I've done all that. Like, get like a nice little Honda or something. And yeah. I was like, the only thing you need is tent. Yeah, tent makes every car look nice. Like, and and, maybe some rims, but whatever. Eh, but I was like, <laughs> as long as you have AC, a CD player, or a USB drive, you're fine. Like, yeah. you're young, you have a car. Mm -hmm. Girls are gonna like you regardless because you can drive. Um, so I, I, was, I was just telling them like, don't invest in like cars and stuff. Try to like, yeah, like What's find, find you what you wanna good. do. Like I had a kid, he already knows he wants to like, be like a Pepsi driver and do all that stuff. So he already has his vision, but I'm like, you gotta not stay. You gotta not get in trouble. Right. Um, but at least you kind of have- What do you mean by Pepsi driver? Like, you know the people that Puts the peps, Pepsi's in the Coke machine or whatever Pepsi machine. He wants to be that. Yeah, they make a lot of money. Really? The drivers. Yeah, yeah they, they're like UPS drivers. And anything truck driving is really good money. Yeah, because you start I off. I guess you like start off in like the, the back end of the shed, and yeah. then you move up. Yeah. And once you're a driver, you're like set. Wow. Yeah. You, okay. UPS and all the yeah. I said no. no. Yeah. My my buddy's a truck driver. He makes a hundred. He makes a hundred grand a year driving yeah. just driving trucks. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and fun and, fact. And same thing. No college or anything like that. And, just and truck driving. Yep. Yeah, just driving trucks makes makes a hundred yeah. grand a year. He, he loves doing it. And again, it's a lot of time. And he probably travels too. Well, he? Yeah. he sees a lot of places, but also truck driving is another thing where you're by yourself a lot. So mm -hmm. it's helped. He kind of develop. You know, he, he did a job where he was by himself a lot and just developed a lot of books and started reading and doing yeah. things and found out how to become better and more. Mm -hmm. And now what he's doing is he's working to buy his own semi-truck and then he's going to work for himself independently. Right. So then he won't have hours or have to work for anybody. There so that's is. what he's doing right now. He's saving up to buy his own truck and then yeah. he's going to do it independently for people. So then he'll have I his own that. hours and his own business I and things it. like that. Your dreams are not impossible, guys. You can accomplish all these things if you just try. And trust the process. And trust the process. And trust, yeah. That's my, that's my thing. I'm, I'm always saying trust the process to everybody. 
Yeah. Um, even though it's like a, you're trying to tell this is little, little EA. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to tell you like, like just trust the process. Trust the process. You can walk soon. Yeah. That's my son. His name's Edison, but I call him EA. EA. Because <laughs> Kylie doesn't like what. Uh, no, Eddie. Eddie. She has one, Ed, Eddie. And his middle name is Alexander. And I've always wanted to give him a nickname. I was going to do Kakarot for Dragon Ball Z. But then I was like, you <laughs> know. Do you like what? Dragon Ball Z? I, I know of it, but I don't, I don't watch it a lot. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah. My husband likes it. So, so, he's Asian. Well, so he's he's Asian. Asian. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of has to. Yeah. Well, I'm black. Black people love Dragon Ball Z. Do they? Yeah. I don't it's, know. it's a big, no, big thing yeah. in our community. Really? And it, well, Asians like Dragon Ball Z, but they like, like, the Naruto and all those other stuff. I don't know. But, like, black cultures love Dragon Ball Z. Anyway, so I was going to name, like, Kakarot Goku, Never but did. Edison Alexander, EA, there it is. Hopefully he likes it once he gets older, because that's all I'm saying, because Edison's, <laughs> Edison's too long for me. Edison is long. So, um, it's a classy name, though. Do you want to end it? Um, or do you have any questions? Is there anything else you want to let the people know? How can they find you? Uh, do you have social medias, yeah, Facebook, so website? How can, how can we get... Actually, I have a question before we end. What is your, like, uh, like do you do, like, a monthly thing for people? Yeah, so so the way, like, our service works for, like, the lawn, um, what we do is, is, is it covers, like, uh, fertilization, all lawn-damaging pests, all lawn-damaging fungus, all treatable weeds of the lawn. So pretty much the only thing left to do is mow it. Yeah. Um, and what we do is it's six, or six times a year. So we come every other month, um, depending on the time of year, depending on what we're applying, but we cover all those things and we do free callbacks as well. So if the customers see anything in the lawn or anything like that, they don't have to know what it is. They can just call us, we come out and know what you're charging, we have to treat or take care of anything, we do that. Mm -hmm. um, and we're very big on education, so we send our customers emails all the time. Yeah. They know, hey, this is what's coming up this time of year. We show them pictures of it. If you see this, call us right away. Like I have a whole line of educational videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about educating the customers. We need our help in this climate with sun, with how hot it is and how wet it is. Even, even chemicals, chemicals break down the most under two things, which is sunlight and water. And what do we that's have why they of? come out all the time. That's like why the other companies, like Massey has to come to my house once a month, right? Right. So, so, and some people do it monthly and things, but any products break down like that. So it was really oh, okay. hard. Yeah. So it's really hard on the outside climate to use things more organically and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So we tell people, because we, we follow a thing called IPM, which is integrated pest management. Mm -hmm. We don't apply things until it's necessarily needed. Yeah. So we're not trying to waste or overuse products. And that's part of us being more organic as well is saving step, like taking extra steps, which may take us more time, but it uses a lot less of that product. Mm -hmm. So doing things like, like we don't put a weed control over your whole lawn. We go put a back a backpack on and we walk around your whole yard with a backpack and just treat where the weeds are. A lot of companies do it over the whole yard because then they can do 10 more yards in a day. Mm -hmm. But you don't need that herbicide over the whole yard. It's very bad for pets, people, kids. Um, and it stresses out the lawn too, but for them it's hey on to the next we can do more production right, yeah. So so it's not just about using less chemicals and safer chemicals I mean well it is but it's also about taking extra steps and using things where they're not necessarily yeah. needed So even though we use more organic things it doesn't give us the excuse to blanket it over everything And it's less waste of product it is. It is. Yeah, yeah it, it is. By just so, treating the areas and stuff. By, yeah, just treating the areas and things. So we let all our customers know that. Um, so if you guys see anything, you know, hey, call us anytime. We come out and know your charge. We have, like, uh, a customer portal. People can um, send us questions 24-7 on the portal. They can send us pictures. Okay. Yeah, and I, I tell people, say, we're not just paying for a service. You're paying for our knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I only two years of school for this. And, and my technician's been doing it for five years. And I make people take very extensive tests for, for who I hire. Mm -hmm. So typically, we also have horticulture professionals on standby. Mm -hmm. So if you have questions about your lawn or you're seeing things, call us. That's what we're here for. We're not just a service. We're, we're, we're here. Which is really awesome, too, because, like, a lot of these corporations, like, that treat a lot of people on my street, you know, like, you can't just call up somebody and get that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and, and or leave a message and they call you back and tell you about what's going on or come back and visit your lawn and, and specifically tell you what's yeah, going on. Yeah, it's like, more, it's like as we talked about, it's, it's more personal mm -hmm. um, that you provide. And they yep. know, like... People like that. Yeah, yeah. and they know, like, you're always going to be there. Mm -hmm. So, and just calling like a corporation in Idaho, like, let me transfer you to yeah, the well, yeah, that's what we talk about. There's no automated system, you call the office, and yeah. if nobody answers, you have you leave a voicemail for yeah. your office, but you're gonna then, call back, yeah, and yeah. then and then my office manager, you know, she calls you back and things like that. A lot of customers have my number, we're trying to 
get them away from calling me because it yeah. floods me out. Oh, but sure. but so because my house manager, she filters the calls and we have a scale. We have a we have a green, yellow, and red. Green goes to my technician, not a big deal, he can handle it. Yellow, I let her make the call who it goes to. Red, it goes to me. Yeah. So she filters it in because you can't have everybody at every time, which Absolutely. is what I, I originally did do, but as we grew, I couldn't drop the, the text yeah, messages, the uh, phone calls. I mean, that I'm it, with. It, well, it gets it gets well, and I only have one phone. It's all work and personal. Yeah. So like it's funny because like when I talk to like friends and stuff, like I talk to people on Snapchat and like Facebook Messenger, it's it's easier that way for me because my texts like I get, I can get up to twenty texts in a day. And so yeah. if I don't answer someone, it, it gets so far down in my feed because it's customers and customers yeah. and business and business. Yeah, for your customers, because I do this. When they call you, do you like put their name and then like how do you remember them? Because like I'll put Jilly, Jill, I do that Jill Brown, fourth grade parent, meets up with Matt. So every time it calls, that whole thing goes mm -hmm. around and I'm like, okay, I know who it is. So I used to do that, but we have 290 customers. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I but when I originally signed everybody up and I did everything on my own, I did. And that's yeah. why I have their number saved. So if someone calls me I have their number saved, they're an OG customer. Yeah. I'm like, you're an OG customer. <laughs> oh, but, that's so funny. but I stopped doing that because it got I mean I already think I already, I, I already have like already so many people in my contacts. But then again, it's just it, it, it really becomes too much. Like I said, now I have to it was great when I had 50 and 60 customers, but I have 290 customers now. Right. So we're trying to filter everything besides like some of the OG ones and things I still take care of myself and like friends mm -hmm. and things um, or you know close they're used to getting that right yeah. so, so I'll, I'll take care of them that but we're really trying to filter it out and that's what I pay my office manager for yeah it's or her filter because if, if people need me I have no problem but people should call me and also that's not the best way to get a response mm -hmm. because if I'm driving around all day and things like my emails are and my phone calls are most important texts and things like that and sometimes it takes me a while to get back to people so I kind of sometimes I I told people like it took me a whole day to text them back, and, I, and I'll answer their question, and then I'll say, "If you need something, call our office because the response will be better." Yeah, that's what that's what my office manager. She's in there all day, and she's made to answer calls and answer questions. Right. Yeah. So it's just it's also a more efficient system because now, like I said, we have two hundred ninety customers. Our goal this year, we started the year with two hundred fifty. I'm gonna try and grow one hundred percent this year. Wow. So we're trying to end yeah. the year with you're five hundred. You're gonna double, and you're already. What? Over forty, so you're at two hundred ninety. Yeah, you're doing pretty good so far. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I gotta get so far. Uh, starting this month, I have to get twenty six new customers a month, but I can only lose three a month. So I have the whole goal board written now. I need to get I, I my my uh, close rate in sales is like eighty percent, which is insane. That's really good. Um, yeah, so. I figured out how many leads I have to get to how many sales. And that's something I missed really much last year too. I had a goal, but I didn't really know how to exactly get there. But this year I got exactly how many leads I have to get every month, how many sales. So I, I have everything written out. I keep track of it on my boards every month on dry erase boards right above like my office. So I see them all the time. Yeah. And I'm keeping track of everything to try to get there. Because that's last really year, awesome. I, I set a goal last year, but I didn't set the... Uh, the micros to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I said the macro, and Gary Vee talks a lot about the micros versus the macros and things mm -hmm. like that. The macros are great, but if you don't have the micros to get there, yeah. and, and I learned that last year, and I was like, well, I slacked a little bit, you know, and yeah. I was like, I really, if I want to make this goal happen, I need to know what I need to be doing every second of every day, every week, every month to mm -hmm. be where I need to be at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. and when you look back, it's going to be like, yeah, yeah, I said, yeah, I said, and I set like goals for myself on like things I'll, I'll reward myself with because that's very important because like I have some friends who have very successful parents and things and I, so I talk to them. Anytime I get the chance, I'm, I'm with somebody successful or anything, even my customers. I have some customers that I have really nice cars and huge homes and I'm very personable so when I go and start selling with them and they find out I'm the owner and things, I start talking, I'll grab information from them, you know what yeah. I mean? I'm not shy to be like, hey, I have a small company, you know, things like that. And, and you don't really, people don't realize how willing those people are to help you. Absolutely. They will tell you, they'll be like, you know, hey, call me, I'm you know, more than happy, they'll get your number and you'll get more personal with people. Even though I was just a long guy going out to sell them, like we end up becoming, you know, close and they're like, hey, I'm willing to help you if you guys need help with your company, I'll help you share it and grow the message. Like, yeah. just ask for those things. People exactly. are really, and especially really to help. You said, as long as you're personable, they will do it. Like Facebook, I have parents, grant tutoring, grant tutoring. So like, I don't really have to do anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and making that call. A lot of people are, people will say, hey, call me, but people just won't make that call. Yeah. And it's kind of like, just take that, like what, even if what you, you call and they're like, um, just kidding, like at least you call. Yeah. Because one person will help you and that one person could be your business partner like yours. Mm -hmm. um, so there's always... Well, you never know who you're going to meet, like what kind of connections you're going to mm -hmm. make, like, and they can really help you in the long run with 
you know, the growth of your business. And if they don't, then it's a lesson. Yeah, yeah it's a, that's the honest and, and, and a lot of people do respect it because they've been there. Yeah. You know, they, they've been where you're at and they, and they see they see themselves in you like, oh, I know they've been there. Uh -huh. And just exactly. a little bit of help from them can mean so much to, to, to me. And, and a lot of people do realize that. So it's like, it's, it's just, it's just ask. And like I said, if anything, if they're like, you know, if they're not willing to do that's fine. I'll, yeah. I'll, you know, on to right. the next. It's, exactly. Like, people usually don't get offended by it. They're like, oh, no, no, thanks. You know, hey, cool. No problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, exactly. So where can they find you? Do you have social media, Facebook, Instagram? Um, yeah, Twitter? I mean, it's pretty much Turf Organics everything. With an X, right? Um, well, it's with the CS. We're really working on that now. Um, there's some companies with the CS. So we're trying to try to buy them out um, by the Instagram. and the, You don't like the, the X? I love the X. Uh, we're, we're, we're really between that. Uh, we did the CS um, because we really were against the X. But I don't know. Uh, it's it's we're kind of really in between. But the marketing guys we have now, like you got to figure it out. It's one or the other. Yeah. And we're in between. It's like like I said, some people like the X. I just don't know how I feel. Right, what do you think? Do you like the X? I like the X. I mean, it sets you aside. I do like the X. From well, I feel like, but a lot of people do use the X. Actually, if you look, yeah. if you do look, a lot of people use the X. So yeah. it's like, and, and I think the X makes it kind of like. Uh, it seems more serious with the or because we're using organics and that's what people know organics as ICS. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and that and we're actually using organics. On a keyword term, if you're typing it in like Google, that's, like yeah. searching. That's and that's what I now that you say that, that's what our marketing guys came back with. Mm -hmm. That they're like, keep that because of keyword searches right. and things, people are gonna be typing organics and you have that in the name. Yeah. That gives you a huge benefit. So um but even though it is the X we have it up. Our marketing guys are doing such a good job. If you type the CS anywhere, we'll come up. Okay, good. It, it just gets it gets confusing because you see the X and maybe think it's someone else. Yeah. But we're really working on. But I think only our Instagram and our website is it's the X. X. Yeah. So it's www.turforganicswithanx.com. Yeah, but if you type in the CS, it, we come up first thing okay, um, cool. and, and things like that. So pretty much Turf Organics Anywhere. Best thing, uh, we have a YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we're really big on Facebook and really active there. We yeah. get like free tips and things like that. We're all about education. So I tell people, even if, like, I get calls from Texas because they have St. Augustine Grass that people have watched my YouTube video. And they oh, call us like, wow. hey, I watched your YouTube video and I need help with this. And, like, I'll spend 20 minutes on the phone, I'll help them out. Like, hey, you know, I don't service you, but That's do this, awesome. that, That's and that, and that. Really and someone cool. actually in this neighborhood found this on YouTube, and they're a customer of mine, and they called us and like, oh, what, you're, you're actually like here? I was like, yeah, I can come out there, and, and things like that. So it's, cool. uh, yeah, it was really it's cool. really cool. Awesome. But I mean, as, if you're watching this on YouTube or our Instagram, I will have his um, Facebook name. We'll Instagram plug up his card to yeah, the video, I'll, too. Yeah, I'll put your email and all that stuff. Awesome. So you will be good to go. Um, but yeah, I guess this is... All right, is guys, hit us up with any questions. And as always, if you want to be featured on our 60-second small business shout-out, hit up us in the yeah. DMs. Yeah, you can hit us hit up, up, up on DMs, DMs, Facebook, <laughs> Jack's Entrepreneurs. Uh, you can send us an email at Jack's Entrepreneurs. Yeah, at our gmail. email is actually Jack's with an X, entrepreneurs <laughs> at gmail.com. See, well, I like the X's. Well, I think we're, we're Jacksonville, so everybody knows, you know, Jack's is J. So we should be fine. So if you have any questions for us um, or even questions for um, Chad, we can send them in, send them to you. Yeah. Um, or you can just call them or send them an email, which will be in the video. And it will be in the description as well. Um, so this is episode what three? Episode three. Um, Get legit. Uh, thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having us. Yeah. It was a blast. Thank it was you so great, much. great episode. It was really Our good. Longest episode, but a All great right. episode. <laughs> um, so yes, thanks for joining us. Um, if you're listening, we will catch you guys next time. Um, Kill everybody.